So if you followed along with my last video, you should have something that looks a little bit like this, with a pretty fundamental understanding of how height maps work and how to apply them to landscapes and such. But without much more tweaking and with just a little bit of know-how, you can make it look something like this. So basically all I've done is just make uh, another texture here, this rock, uh, this rock texture in the middle of the, the cliffs here. I've added some foliage, also added a, a water plane here in the river. And um, yeah, just a little bit, a little bit of extra tweaking, mostly in the material, as you can, uh, you can see in the snow up in the mountains. So I thought I'd just uh, revisit this video, and we can have a little talk about how I made the, made this material work. So here is how it looks now. It's a little bit more involved than than in the last video, I know, but the fundamental uh, method is the same. So here we have our height maps here, the the main height map and our river height map. The same calculations here with the cheap contrast and our landscape coordinates to map the uh, the height maps across the entire span of the landscape. From there, I've gone and imported another texture here, this rock uh, diffuse, just so that we can we can use that on the mountain and use this layer blend node, which I which I use a couple times in in the different aspects of the material to uh, to bring in painting layers, which is an easy node to work with. We just uh, right click, we want a layer blend, a landscape layer blend node, and then from here you can add layers. Uh, just just here on the left. Once that's done, we'll come back over here, then go to modes and then landscape. And in the paint, uh, the paint tab here, you can see that there are layers. Layers will have appeared. And then from there, you just have to create some layer info files. It's very simple. I'll leave a link in the description to my first landscape video where I cover uh, landscape painting in pretty good detail. So with that covered, all I've done is uh, lapped through uh, the the material once more so that we can paint with the rock and the grass and the sand the snow still works as it did before uh, that's with the with the height from the from the height map determining the tops of the mountains i've added some uv controls to our uh, to all of our textures this should be pretty familiar uh, to a lot of you it's just a simple multiply with a with a divide in our texture coordinates i did this in the last video i've just added one for each of our uh, each of our textures then there's normals so i used a very simple little app uh, called Njob, which is a uh, free download, totally free by Charles Hollemersch. And uh, it's very simple. There are better uh, normal map generators, but this one's just super simple. Gets a pretty good result and it was perfect for, for what I wanted to do here. So I just uh, used our diffuse maps here to generate a normal map for each of our textures and then lerped it with a strength, with a strength scalar as the alpha and a, bl a simple blue color here as our A value. Another pretty simple... Um, Simple calculation here. You can check out my PBR materials video and uh, I'll explain explain that in a little bit more detail. And then again, just left them through this uh, layer blend node and plug them into normal. So they work in the exact same way as the diffuse textures do and um, use the same layer blend node. Similarly with roughness here. So there's the layer blend node again and these same two lerps. See, this is how the uh, how the layers are being split up in the final material. So the result of this second lerp here goes into the into the material node here, the final material attributes. And to calculate roughness, because the the video, the last video that I did was pushing 25 minutes, half hour. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to sort of finish it because I think I'd covered all of the the fundamental things that I wanted to cover. But here is um, here is the roughness calculation. So I used a scalar for each of our uh, each of our textures here and a desaturation so the so I get to control how much the texture is desaturated and then from there just a simple multiplication to control how much of that roughness is going to show through in the final layer and then they're just plugged into the layer blend in our lerps just like the, the the normal maps and the diffuse so it's really not a particularly complex material it just looks a bit like that because it's kind of kind of big but the 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 fundamental um, method of it is fairly simple we're just doing it with a lot of textures at a time and the base pass here is only 148 instructions. That's fairly lightweight as far as shaders go. And I know it is just a simple uh, simple surface shader, but we have a, a little bit going on here. So back in the editor, we'll talk about how um, how we did this. So this is just painted uh, via the, the landscape painting tools, which is, so over here, yeah, the, thir the third tab in your landscape mode, set it to paint. And then in the left-hand one, I've got this set to pattern. Now what this does, is it uses a texture, in this case, a grunge texture from my texture pack as the brush for the, for the layer that you wanna paint with. And you can see it uh, here, you can see how this looks, make it a little bit bigger. So this is just a grunge map and we can use this texture scale here 
to scale it up or down so we can see more or less detail coming through. The big limitation with using this method is the resolution of the landscape itself. For the sake of the video, I used a fairly low resolution landscape, but you can use a much, much higher resolution landscape at the cost of some performance to get much higher detail uh, painting out of your out of your pattern brush like this. We can even you know rotate rotate around and do a couple of other things. We can pan the, the texture up, down, left, right, and obviously change the size and the fall off as well. And here we can see sort of how this is going to work. I'll make the scale up a bit bigger so that we can play with it here. And the strength, we'll leave the strength fairly low. So you can see as I paint here, this is with the rock layer, that it's only going to paint where the where the texture is uh, is showing up here in this neon blue sort of color. So yeah, we can get some nice blending there between our between our layers. And this is how I did the, the, the sand on the side of the, the hillside here. So we'll click the sand layer and I'll make it a little bit smaller. So this is how you can get some nice sharp edges with your with your texture blends. Otherwise we get this kind of faded faded look here, which you might not like. It's not that not particularly realistic. So we can just play around with this as much as we need and uh, make make some really nice rock effects going on. And I did a little bit more painting over here too. Sort of neatened up the the riverside, pushed the sand up the up the banks a little bit, and then the next thing we'll talk about is the water plane here. So this is just a simple mesh that I uh, just added a bunch of subdivisions to and exported from Maya, and just placed it underneath the the landscape here, so it's intersecting with the ground at about where I want the water level to be. And the the reason that it needs the subdivisions is because I wanted to use world position offset to get this. Uh, let's see if we can catch it in motion. So we can see the, the water moving up and down the bank here. It's a little bit sketchy. I might come back to this and, and have a second look. But this water material just came straight out of the starter content. It's this uh, M Water Ocean. I just duplicated it to make some changes. In fact, let's open it up and have a quick look. Uh, the big change that I made was adding these UV controls, which again should be fairly, fairly familiar to a lot of you guys. Just a texture coordinate node multiply, append, so I can get UV and uh, X and Y controls, followed up by a, a general multiplier for the overall resolution of the UVs. And secondly, a world position offset. So I came out of this last blend angle corrected normals node into just a multiply with a scalar and plug that straight into world position offset. And that gives us these controls to make it dynamically shift and change against the, against the riverbank here. It's a pretty cool effect and doesn't cost much in terms of performance. Just adds a little bit of extra realism to the water here. And then I just tweak the color, really. So we have a, a fairly nice looking water. I can add some transparency and you know do something with with underneath, you know, under the under the water line. So maybe if we wanted to incorporate swimming or you know some some caustics, maybe even I don't know, a, a post-process volume that changes the the look and, and colors of the of the scene when you're underwater. But that's uh, that's about all there is in the water plane. Very very simple. If you have if you don't have starter content enabled, remember to come up here to add new, then add feature or content pack, and then content packs, and you should see starter content here in in this uh, in this window here. Then you just go add to project, and it adds all of these uh, all of these different things such as you know a whole material collection, all this kind of stuff that you can play with. Very handy, good for beginners if you're just starting out. And uh, what's next that we can talk about is the well the foliage. So the foliage is straight out of my foliage pack, which you can get on my Gumroad store. I'll leave links to all of this stuff in the in the description below. That's the the foliage, the texture pack, um, and uh, obviously the the texture files for download for the realistic landscapes. So where are we? Where's the texture pack? Here we go. Not the texture pack. I don't want the texture pack. I want the foliage. Foliage pack. Here we go. So it's fairly simple stuff. In fact, if we go up to here to modes and then foliage. So these are all the assets that I used. Uh, it's all of these guys, including all the grass that I made more recently. And they're just, they're just here, um, here in the, in the level. So for uh, performance's sake, I've tried to keep the numbers fairly low, but as you can see, like 300k, 130k, there's lots and lots and lots of these grass, uh, grass meshes. So set the culling distance to something pretty reasonable. I think I've set this to, uh, if we scroll down here, we'll see. 3,000, yeah, so the, the grass is only going to appear 3,000 units away from the player, 
But the trees, the, the bigger assets here, they'll appear 25,000 units away from the player. So that's much more distance uh, for the trees to appear. And when we hit play and jump into the level, yeah, we, we hardly notice it at all. If we're looking downhill, you can see them sort of pop in as we move forward. But for the most part, you don't even notice the transition. And it adds quite a nice look to the scene. You can see the, the atmospheric fog interacting with the trees at a distance. It gives a very, very nice sort of feel to the, to the whole thing. And here's the mountains in the background. So if we cruise up the, to the foothills here, have a go around. My forest is maybe a little bit dense, but I quite like the look. It's, it's, it's going to work. So here we are up at, the, up at the foothills of our mountain. Yeah, so adding the, the normal map to the snow really makes the, the, the mountain sort of pop out, gives them a much more realistic sort of feel. And adds quite a bit more detail to the, to the overall look and feel of our scene here. And we have quite a nice, uh, nice little outdoor environment going on. So uh, be wary of how much of this foliage that you use. I know it looks pretty when you're up close, but the more of it that there is, then uh, the more exponential your uh, lighting build is going to cost and, and, going to, and how much time it's going to take. So just be wary of that. If you've um, got, you know, like a, a NASA supercomputer, then it won't be much of a problem. Or if you've got the swarm agent set up for, for uh, like multiple PCs to do your rendering for you, then yeah, you can you can get around it that way. But I thought I'd uh, revisit this just to give you guys a look at how you can take this to the next level. You know, add a lot more detail, a lot more realism, and a uh, and a lot more, you know, a lot, a lot more things to the scene to make it really jump out at you. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. I hope I uh, answered some questions and, and took it a little bit further. And I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Oh, and I wanted to remind you guys that you can get all of my tutorial assets now on my Gumroad store. That's every single one, including some like high resolution screenshots of every blueprint and all these things that I made, including the textures, uh, assets, meshes, anything like that that I've made from any one of my previous uh, UE4 videos. So be sure to check that out. It even you'll even get the the foliage that I work with. You get the texture pack, everything in the Toon Shader uh, video. What else we got here? There's the projector light asset files. That's an old school one. People seem to like that one. Night vision. You can get some night vision post process cranking. Uh, the thermal vision. I like the thermal vision. There's all sorts of things that you can play with here. So if you want a real jump start on your on your Unreal Engine education, then be sure to consider checking it out because it'll get you all the things that you need to get started. So that's all I wanted to say at the end. Catch you guys in the next one. See you next time.